I was going to ask you about uh, the Thunder years. When when James got traded, what was your initial reaction? I thought James was the most selfish guy in the world. I really did. Like, I, I wrote James a big-ass text message, like a long-ass message. And I just went off. I was like, bro, you selfish as hell. Like, man, we had a, we got a chance to do something special. Like, lose my number, motherfucker. You know, I, I'm cussing him out and everything. He responded and said, it's all good, man. I got a lot to worry about right now. I got to carry this team. I'll holler at you. That was his, was his response. But I was hurt because I didn't want it to, like, at, at, at that point, I already knew, like, I'm not making any all-star games. Like, I'm a, I'm a role player, and I already had accepted my role. And so when James left, I didn't understand it at the moment because I was thinking about myself and trying to win more championships that this young man was nothing but 23 years old, like trying to go accomplish making the All-Star game, trying to go get $100 million for us with his contract, trying to go make trying to go make 100 to 150 plus with his shoe money. And here I was being selfish, not thinking that he had individual goals and shit that he wanted to accomplish, and I should have been supporting that. Where are you guys at right now? I mean, we was cool. We we got back on point a little bit, like five, six years later. And then all of a sudden, when I got in the media, I said something. You're a hater. You turn, I, you turn back into a hater. Yeah, I turned back into a <laughs> fucking hater. And all of a sudden, he got mad at me. And then we got cool. And now I guess he's not talking to me no, like right now. I don't give a damn. I, I always fa- found it fascinating, that, that trade, because, again, he was – he was uh, extension eligible. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't a free agent. They didn't have to trade him. You guys had just made the finals. I don't. I still don't understand why they didn't just play the year out. Because what happened was Sam Presti actually gave him to twelve o'clock. I remember it was it was like a Wednesday. He was like, "You got twelve o'clock to sign this." I believe it was like a sixty-four million dollar extension. Was Fifty-two is what I heard. No, Maybe it, was like, it, was yeah, it was like 64. And James was like, I want the max. But what ended up happening was was when James, KD, and Russ all went to the Olympics and they won that gold medal, everybody like LeBron, D. Wade, was gassing up Carmelo, was gassing up James saying, you need your own team. And they wasn't gassing them. They were right. He actually did need his own team. But at the same time, they was trying to break the Oklahoma City Thunder up so they could win more titles. Yeah, I mean, I I played against James when he was with OKC. I I knew he was good. I had no idea that he was going to be that good. I did. You did. You saw that he could be an MVP someday? (laughs) Bro. He used to bust Russ and KD ass at practice, include me. Like, I started in five, James used to give us work. And I saw a few times where, like, he had 40s off the bench. One time we was in Utah, he came in off the bench and had 40. We went to Phoenix, he had 40 off the bench. And I'm like, people are just not having 40s off the bench and you playing with Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. Like, those guys are taking 30-plus shots by themselves. So for you to come into the game and have 40, you have to be elite and special. And then I saw James, I said, it was during the playoffs, and I remember it was game four, and we was playing the Dallas Mavericks, and we was about to close them out. And he went for 24 points in the fourth quarter. And the way he did it, I was like, nah, he got. That was the job. game. That was the game when I I knew that he wasn't just like a good player. He was a great player. Yeah, it was that game. I, remember, I, I that. remember that game so well. He, yep. In pick and roll, that fourth quarter, operating out of that, it was a closeout game too, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was a closeout game, and I was just like, okay, he's he's great. I, I still didn't know he was going to be, you know, first team All NBA over and over, MVP, all that stuff. Um, incredible career for him. Do you think um, James trade aside because it's a big trade? You think there's anything they could have done to get them over the hump that they should have done? 
Nah. I mean, I I just think it was more so um it was all about KD and Russ. Like it was it was about their relationship. Like that continuity wasn't there. You know what I mean? Like no matter how much they tried to fake it to the public, their 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 brotherhood, like it never was a brotherhood. And that's okay, right? Because you don't have to be somebody's brother to go out there and try to win a championship, but it helps. But they never just got on the same page. And it was like the most difficult situation I've ever been in, uh, coming from a Celtic team that was so close that when I got to the Oklahoma City Thunder, it was so separated. Right, like you had Eric Maynard, you had Russell Westbrook and James Harden, those guys all and Daquan Cook, like they had their little click and they kicked it with each other, and then you just had KD, who was just by himself. He didn't even hang with them, and so I started to see it, and I'm like, hold on, we can't win like this, not where we trying to go, and I started noticing that when we went on the road, I'm thinking. Oh, we gonna have team dinner together. We didn't have it. Like KD was going his own direction. Some of his boys would fly down along with his brother. They would do their own thing. And then these younger guys, so I'm like, hold on, I gotta come in the middle of this. It was to the point where their families wasn't speaking. And I'm like, hold on, we gotta like kind of change this environment. And so I started like forcing, forcing it. Like, I would put those two guys, KD and Russ, in a group message, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to start off by talking football. KD was a Redskins fan. Russ is a Cowboys fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. Let me start talking shit. Had made them start interacting with each other. Then I'm like, you know what? Let me have a card game in my house. Sent everybody in the, in the, in the, in the, on the team in the group message, hey, look, be at my house, 7 o'clock. We're going to play Boo Ray. On the road, hey, look, man, no more bringing your family members. We're going to kick it with each other. We're going to dinner at 6 o'clock. We're going to come back. We're going to watch these games on TNT. We're going to play Boo Ray in my room. Like, I had to start forcing that for them to fuck with each other, but they never really fucked with each other. They did it just because, but it wasn't authentic. And I think that's what KD and Russ go look down the line and say, you know what? We really had something special, but we didn't embrace it. And that's going to be a sad thought.